past few months, there have been some amazing and touching stories of heroism here in Israel. Now, one such story that has been slightly under the radar, which we want to shed light on, is hers. Captain Rebecca Henrietta Joanna Baruch, who recently and tragically passed away. But even after her untimely death, she will be saving lives. That is because she asked to donate her organs. Rebecca was a lone soldier who made Aliyah or immigrated from the Netherlands to Israel and chose to serve in the IDF. During her first year of service, Baruch lived at Kibbutz Saad in the Gaza border area. She then decided to enlist as a combat soldier and completed officer training. Well, I now have the great honor of being joined from The Hague by Robert Baruch, the father of Captain Rebecca Henrietta Johanna Baruch. First and foremost, I salute both you and your daughter. What an unbelievably amazing young lady. Can you tell us a little bit about your beautiful girl and the service that she did in the IDF? It's, um, it's a story, um, which um, uh, over the last few days, I, I had the opportunity to and to find out more about her, because as as most parents know, uh, children at a certain age decide not to tell everything um, uh, about themselves to their uh, to their parents. I, I made a parallel. Uh, we had a beautiful shiva night here in the um, uh, in the Jewish community, and I recalled her bat mitzvah, and I remembered uh, actually her bat mitzvah was this parasha, parashat Yitro. Uh, in 2011, and I shared uh, the uh, the experience that she walked up to, onto the bima, and I thought to myself, "Who is this woman? Uh, she had made such a tremendous growth at um, at that uh, sorry at that uh, time, and this is an experience that um, was paralleled with what I heard, learned over the past uh, over the past few uh, uh, few weeks." Um, uh, Rebecca, a lot of people came up to me and said, I'm sorry for your loss. And in Israel, I said, I'm sorry for yours. Because Rebecca, when she finished secondary school, chose to um, move to Israel to live as a Jew between Jews, as a, as, a, as a fighter between fighters, as an idealist between idealists. We told all our children that um, when you see that there is something wrong, uh, it is an invitation to correct it, and this is what she uh, uh, what she did. She said in interviews, um, "It is not a a logical step for me to make Aliyah. Um, I don't agree with Israel's policies. I don't speak the language. I don't have any relatives. But I think this country is going to um, make the best out of me." And this is this is what she um, uh, what she what she did. She had a beautiful year in a Medina in Sterot. The people from Sterot know uh, the famous restaurant uh, Humus and Tchina, which was her famous, her her favorite uh, uh, restaurant. She told herself Hebrew on a near native speaking level in a year. She enlisted uh, to the army, and then had the opportunity to choose for a, um, a combat role, and then choose to be uh, an officer. And all this because she knows that whenever you have the opportunity to change something that you don't agree with or to strengthen something you do agree with, it's only to take a, um, <clears throat> sorry, to take uh, an active role. And this is what she did. She started in um, uh, the 717 unit, as she said, playing cat and mouse with terrorists and smugglers in the, um, uh, in the Negev desert. Then she moved to the 414 unit surrounding Gaza, and she was responsible for all the bases that held the balloons. She extended her service there, <clears throat> and um, uh, actually was quite. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the word, but this, this is, she saw she saw that there was a lot of room for um, um, for improvement uh, there. She wrote proposals uh, at one point, and this was well documented, one of the balloons fell down on the wrong side of the border and she did not ask for orders or permission. She went in with a few men and uh, and retrieved the, um, uh, the balloon. She wrote a proposal for improvement and we know what happened with the uh, proposals for improvement that were done with the intelligence um, function around, uh, around Gaza. She left 
uh, the uh, the army in March of 2023 and started preparing her entrance to uh, to university. Uh, um, every Saturday, she demonstrated with as as tens or hundreds of thousands of, of other Israelis for democracy and inclusion in uh, in Tel Aviv. And then on the 7th of October, when the atrocities um, uh, happened from uh, from Gaza at two o'clock in the afternoon. He applied for uh, he applied for service. He um, sent a message, tell me where I'm needed. <clears throat> then finally, she went. Uh, she was drafted on the 11th of October. Uh, she went to a base in the north where she was not needed. Uh, needed, sorry. And then she went back to uh, to the south where she went to the bases where she served until March, and she saw with her own eyes what happened to her soldiers and commanders uh, that were, uh, and officers, sorry, <clears throat> that she was uh, working with. And this affected her, of course, uh, a great deal. Um, um, then she was drafted into the, uh, into the Air Force, um, where she uh, was connected to the Iron Dome uh, program. She was severely, severely hit by the terrible murder on uh, Rose uh, Lubin, uh, who she knew from from Kibbutz uh, Saad during a break. And actually, at the end of this uh, of this tenure, she uh, she had a break. And in that break, she went to South Africa to lead uh, the summer camp of Habonim. All our children are proud and active members of Habonim Dror, the progressive Zionist uh, youth movement. She came back on the 1st of January, 2nd of January, we brought her back uh, to her base. We were going to pick her up on Friday, or she was going to come up uh, on, uh, come back on Friday. But on Thursday, she called us that she didn't feel well. And 24 hours later, she was fighting for her life, which was, of course, a terrible experience. And that is why she had so much more, so much more um, in her. Uh, she had so much more to offer. And it's a great loss. It's a great loss for us as parents, which we will take with us the rest of our lives. It is a great loss for the army. It is a great loss for um, for Israel uh, as, a, as a whole. We're tremendously proud that she's buried on, on Har Herzl. Um, uh, and two minutes walk from where two of my great uncles um, are commemorated who fell in the Second World War and in um, at the Battle of uh, of Latrun. So it's 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 a it's a terrible, sad story of of a talent that doesn't fulfill uh, the promise of a, of a potential that is not uh, 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 fulfilled. And we love her and we miss her, and we are supported by literally thousands of people and messages mm -hmm. and and which is which is amazing um and and in the end when i look at it from a bigger perspective you know when we were on our Herzl, there were two graves to the left of her uh that were yet to be covered and the next day there were three on the other side and it's every parent's fear when their children uh, are in the uh, are in the army and for us living in the Netherlands, not understanding the military, not having been in the military um, uh, ourselves, um, and of course being surrounded by people who have completely different understandings of what's going on in, in Israel, uh, if I say it mildly. Um, it's a different situation, but I must say we are, the support from the Air Force, from the Army also is, uh, is tremendous. Robert Baruch, if there's any, any consolation in this major loss, as you mentioned, for you, the army, the state of Israel, it's that even after her death, she's going to be saving so many lives. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here on our breaking edition and just wish you continued strength. And if I could jump through the screen to give you a giant hug, know that I would. Thank you. Thank you.